Right, we're back. Uh, having escaped the vacuum of outer space, we're now sitting here in this place. It's pretty much virtually deserted with the exception of some dead bodies. And on this dead body we have a handful of nanites, uh, which I believe I explained in very vague detail in the previous segment. Uh, we used this to buy some stuff from replicators. This is the currency of the game. And we're going to end up collecting a shit ton of these, so it's nice to have. And then up there you'll notice that it's actually a handful of items, which this is basically the cheesing way to get them. Normally you're supposed to use the Psi powers and basically got to stand at that doorway and there's an ability that allows you to draw the items off of that ledge towards you. But yeah, I kind of cheesed it because I, didn't, I don't have any Psi powers and I do not have the, enough Cyber modules to get the Psi powers yet. Speaking of which, we just found four more uh, on top of the four that we were given it by Polito at the end of last segment and the sub-modules are used on these terminals. These are each represent a single subsystem of the cybernetic gear that you've been fitted with, in case that hasn't been firmly established, you've been fitted with something weird. Um, and here are your stats. So as you can see, uh, the higher your stat is, the more nano-modules it will cost to go to the next level in that stat. As you can see, level 3 endurance, which is pretty damn awesome. Uh, over here we have some te technical abilities, and we have over here the weapon, sta uh, weapon trees, uh, the standard energy and heavy. There is actually a fourth one, but it hasn't been revealed as of yet. We'll be finding out what that is in due course. And this is where you'll purchase your psionic uh, disciplines. So what I'm going to do with the eight modules that I've picked up is I'm going to put uh, one... I'm going to level up my hacking by one level, which will cost me six modules. And with level two hacking, we can now... Uh, our hacking abilities are now obviously increased, plus the amount of things we can hack is also increased, so we now have a slightly wider range. Speaking of which, this uh, numeric keypad can be hacked, but uh, there is actually a uh, workaround for this. If you do, if you do not, uh, if you're not a big fan of hacking and you would just want to skip the whole uh, setup at, in general, you can just type in this code which does not actually appear anywhere in the game. I do not believe it. I don't think there's any logs that tell you about this code. Uh, I think you just get it from uh, like walkthroughs or something like that. There might be something about it, but you just type that in and you'll get a whole bunch of items, including these speed boosters, which once you've used those, they will give you a boost in power. I think if you do this, yeah, this will show you something like 20 seconds of double speed, which is quite nice. I have not actually tried the whole query cursor thing. And here we have a meta hypo, which pretty much says what it does what it says on the tin. You heal yourself by a few points when you chop when you in administer it to yourself. And we also have this brawn boost implant, which we'll plug in right now, and you'll notice that we have more access to items. Our inventory space has uh, been increased. Basically, the higher your strength level is, the more the more uh, items that you can carry in your inventory. Right now, I'm at level two strength. Plus, the uh, Brawn Boost Implant gives me the equivalent of level 3. This strength will also increase the amount of damage that I do with this wrench, since it's the only weapon I've got at this current moment. And the only other items here are just this random wrench, which I'm just going to throw away, because there's no reason for me to have it. And the Basketball, which we picked up right at the start of the first segment. So, now that we're done with all of this sort of stuff on the downstairs area, we'll check the bodies again. Uh, did I check that one? Yes, I did. Uh, nothing in that crate, is there? No. Okay, so the next thing we can do now is head up th through this elevator. Up onto this second room. We can do some more exploration and see what the hell we can find here. Medical hypos, it's nice to have a surplus of these because especially uh, when you take on the uh, mul multitude of enemies, you're going to take a fair bit of damage. And it's nice to have these things to heal you up. And in this uh, weird... I don't know why they sealed it off with glass, but in here we have a med hypo, which increases our side points, which is indicated by the uh, red bar down in the bottom left-hand corner over here. And here we have some just standard types of ammo, standard bullets, that pretty much does what it says on the tin, and rifled slugs, which are one of the two um, types of ammo that our shotguns use. Uh, there's nothing there, and there's a mug that's sort of there. There are a whole bunch of uh, things here that serve absolutely zero purpose. It's one of those things is the mug. Um, so if you see something like that, you just have no need to pick it up. I do have a need to pick up this, uh, Psionics Amplifier, which 
is basically this, sort of just plugs itself into your arm and then you can project your psi powers. The only problem is I don't have any psi powers to use it with at this current stage. I'm just dragging it along so that when I have the... Oh, hello. Can somebody let me out? I can't find the card. Please, let me out of here. Yeah, weird ghost things. I think these are... Uh, I think these occurred in Bioshock as well because in case that hasn't been established, um, Bioshock is actually a spiritual successor to this thing. If, if it wasn't for this thing being such a great game, Bioshock probably would not have existed at all. So that's kind of a noteworthy thing to establish. But anyways, in, in regards to the Psy um, powers, I think I just lost my train of thought. Okay, I'll try to, I'll try to remember it at some other point. But uh, we, the card that we picked up in the other room will allow us access into this area, and this is where shit starts to happen, because as you can see, there's an enemy over there. Well done. I'm uploading some more modules. Yeah, these things are kind of weird, and they just dished out a shit ton of damage to me. Whoa, life itself. Oh. Right, you're dead. Oh, God. Okay, so with that those two now out of the way, let's actually try to work out what the hell just happened as I heal myself using uh, the cans of soda. It sounds rather unhygienic, but I can still use the cans of soda. They each heal one point of health. And then by using right click, you can administer yourself a medical hypo. Uh, I think it's like a one second duration where it heals you. Like it's just basically like two points every second until you've healed 10 off of the one hypo. And some more bag of chips, which once again heal one more hate. Uh, point of health and this bottle of liquor if you're not playing um, psionics then you have no reason to not heal yourself with this bottle of liquor the only problem is I am obviously doing psionics so I have to stay steer right away from any form of alcoholic beverage because it will actually drain my side points whenever I drink so here we have a random electronic security crate and this is the reason I wanted level 2 hacking, because now I'm able to make an attempt to hacking. And this is basically like a minigame sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of these nodes, and he see here you just click on one, and if it's lit up, then that's obviously a good thing. Uh, once you've lined up three, like what I just did there, the security crate will open and yield all of its uh, contents. That thing is needlessly freaky. Hopefully, we don't have to deal with him until a little bit later on. Something. And you have the attention span of a gnat. I don't even have the words for that one. On most decks, you'll find a quantum bio reconstruction device. Xerxes shut them all down, but I've discreetly put them back online. You'll need to interface with each machine locally to provide a quantum entanglement sample. Once you do that, the device will be able to rebuild your body essentially from scratch. It's not pleasant, but it's preferable to slow decomposition. Sucks to be this guy. Well, as stated in the title of the last segment, shit really did go south fast. So yeah, we're going to switch this on, and now whenever we die, we just get transported back here, and at the cost of, I think, 5 or 10 nanites, uh, we can just come back with a small amount of health. And we have a whole bunch of logs, which actually, now that I think about it, I've got to start reading some of those logs, because I think I've got a bit of a surplus of logs that I need to read. And they all have some bits and pieces that you need to learn about the game and the basically how the ship works and how the ship actually ended up copying this horrendous bloody overhaul, I guess. So, since this is a pretty safe place, we'll actually have a look at some of these logs. Hey, Doc. A security bot showed up with orders for me to place this grunt into the recovery freezer. I'm no cyber doc, but I know a plant job when I see one. I suppose you know they outlawed our grade cyber goodies after that fiasco back on Citadel Station. But hey, I just work here, right? For those of you who aren't incredibly informed, Citadel Station was the setting for the first System Shock game in which shit kind of went south as a result of an AI going incredibly insane. Why is it that no one listens to me? The security protocols on the Xerxes system are clearly immature. Some idiot hacked into the primary data loop last night and made Xerxes sing Elvis Presley songs for three hours. I finally had to pull the voice subsystem offline. 
What would happen if someone with a real agenda got into him? Speaking of AIs, uh, Xerxes is the AI that is uh, in command on this ship, basically in charge of doing pretty much everything on the entire ship. I got called up around 0430 to help unload the shuttle coming back from Tau Ceti. Kerenskin was there alone. Jesus, what the hell happened to him? He lost most of his hair, and you could see these lumps on the side of his neck. And that smell. I told him he should go see Dr. Watts, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, la -dee da Kerenskin is a rather central character to the whole of this game, and you'll find out a bit more about him later on. But in the meantime, now that we've read all of our logs, we can go and do some more exploration. Uh, what have we got around here? Crazy-ass explosions. That's a bit of a thing. And... Ooh, jeez. The power outage has also taken out access to this bulkhead. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find a recharger. The one you used before is in hard vacuum now, I'm afraid. But there should be another one on this deck. Once you get the battery recharged, place it in the auxiliary override. So anyways, uh, I would like to go and get that, but there is a camera. And that camera is basically, as soon as it sees me, it's going to go incredibly insane. So how in the world are we going to sort that out? Well, that's what these things are for. Security control stations. Once again, they're a, they're a hackable sort of item. And if you click on a node and it goes black like that, that means you've failed the attempt of hacking on that node. If you get something like this on a red node, uh, which is indicated by like ice nodes. There's none of them here, which because they aren't red bordered. If you fail to hack a uh, ice node, then you break the item that you're trying to hack, and the worst possible result will come of it. In this case, you'll end up setting off the security alarm, and then enemies will just start swarming it and kill the crap out of you. In the case of one of these, it'll just blow it up, completely destroying it and its contents. So here, now that we've got the security shut down for the next six minutes, we can. Uh, once I worked out how to jump. Wait, oh god. I'm right up against this, which means I automatically try to mantle onto it. Uh, can I... I, I still can't hit it, thank you. Lord. Alright, here we have another log, we'll have a look at this. Marie, I've got to restrict access to engineering until we can figure out what to do down there. It's just too hot. I don't know where all the hazard suits went, so I'm reduced to bringing down an armful of rad hypos. Those damn things always give me a headache. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Speaking of anti-radiation hypo, we've found our first one. And there are areas with uh, radiation in this game, and so the radiation hypos will clear out any of that radiation that you uh, end up encountering. And here we have a random gaming system. I don't understand why they incorporated this, but it's just sort of there, I guess, to pass off time and in case you were bored of killing people. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different games you can play on that thing. I don't know if I'm going to be showing it off. I don't even know if I'm going to be keeping it, to be perfectly honest. But, um... That insipid computer Xerxes has shut down the elevator as well. You can transfer power at the engine core on deck one, which will get the elevator up and running again. But you can't use the elevator to get down there. Wait. There's some kind of maintenance access right on this hallway. You can use it to reach deck one. However, it's locked, and Xerxes is hiding the passcode from me. Dr. Watts should have the code. He's probably in the crew subsection. Grassi has the key to get in there, but he's in the medical subsection, probably near the biopsy lab. Now get to the medical subsection and find Grassi. Thank you, Polito, for completely ruining my train of thought for the second time in the segment. I think I was mentioning something about this stupid bloody game player. I don't really know. Well, now that I lost my train of thought, time to go and grab a new one. Uh, this unresearched object I'm going to keep on me until such time as I can get a research skill. Uh, I need uh, level 1 research in order to research this. And uh, as you can see, the... Xerxes has control of the ship's security system. Avoid or destroy any security cameras you see. You can hack security computers to power down the cameras, too, if you're good enough. But don't botch the job, or you'll set off the alarm yourself. Your corpse is useless to me. That would have been, that would have been the third time that she ruined my train of thought, but she was talking about the exact same subject that I was about to talk about. So, let's destroy this camera so that it poses absolutely no threat to us. 
And do I want to go in this direction? Actually, no, I do not want to go in this direction. I want to go straight through here, see if there's anything worth over here. Uh, nothing on that dead body. Although there should be something on this dead body, if I'm correct. Yep, our first pistol of the game. Now with a standard level of one. Yeah, that's the thing. With a standard level of one, uh, we're able to wield the pistol immediately. Uh, reloading is actually pretty easy to do. As long as you have uh, bullets in your inventory, you just press R. Plus, uh, for something like the uh, pistol that has a multitude of different ammo types that you can use, uh, once I have something like um, armor-piercing bullets, which I'm pretty sure are coming very, very soon, uh, you just press, I believe, the F key, and you can just switch between the um, different types of ammo. This here is a nanite-based yeah. matter replicator, and it requires a hack skill of three in order to hack into. Uh, if you're able to do this, though, you, it will severely decrease the cost of the items that you will be purchasing here. Plus, it'll get rid of a bag of chips from the uh, menu here and replace it with something infinitely more useful. Now, let's see if we've got any more logs that we need reading. Nope. Sweet. So we can immediately read this log as soon as we pick it up. I've been unable to get in touch with Delacroix. This place is falling apart. Members of my team keep disappearing. The leaks in the venting shaft shorted out the primary access channel, and that means we'll all be on auxiliary power until we can get it back up. That means all the lifts are out. Marie, where the hell are you? So from what we've gathered with the uh, logs that we picked up so far, something's kind of going weird with this ship. It seems to be like breaking down and it, it's almost as if it was never meant to actually like... It, seem, it, it seems to me as if this thing was not ready for prime time. And we managed to get those items as well by cheesing it. Normally, once again, you would have to use the uh, kinetic redirection side ability to grab them. Uh, and we've managed to pick up some armor-piercing bullets. There was another clip just down there. And these, like I said, press the F key and you switch over to the armor-piercing rounds. We also have a strength booster, which is probably the rarest of all of the boosters, now that I think about it. Um, it basically just increases your strength level by one for, I think, five minutes? I think that's about right. Um... And is there anything else in here? No, there isn't. But uh, there is this thing up here. It is a turret. And I'm going to start shooting the shit out of it with my armor piercing rounds before the thing starts becoming active again. Because it would go active in uh, another 15 seconds time had I not left, let it, and I not shot the shit out of it. So now that's sort of out of the way and it poses zero threat to me. Um, those turrets are actually hackable. You need a hack level of four, I believe, to... Uh, bust your way into those things, but if you do hack them, then they will uh, basically just join your side, and any enemies that it sees, uh, it'll just shoot the shit out of, and there's another hybrid which I don't really want to deal with at this current moment. So we'll have a look in over in this room. Oh, we've got a chemical storeroom. I'll let Polito explain this one, because I know as soon as I walk in, she'll go on a tangent about this. Each deck has a chemical storeroom where you can find the resources you need to research the artifacts you'll find around the ship. Don't try to carry around all the chemicals at once. It's impractical and unnecessary. Your research software will tell you what chemicals it needs and when. And each of these chemical storerooms has a chemical manifest which lists out all the chemicals that, you, that are contained within this room. So there's a whole bunch of different ones we can use. So we can come back to this at a later date when we're researching something new later on into the game and we can grab something that's here if this room has it. But at this point in time, I do not believe there's anything of worth except for maybe this fermium. I know Polito said it's impractical and unnecessary to carry the stuff, but I've got a fair bit of room, so I'll carry this fermium with me because I do know that the fermium is needed for a research, for a thing that I need to research later on. And this poor sap is about to get his shit racked. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, more armor-piercing bullets, that's always nice. And I think, now that I think about it, I should... Oh, God, life itself, All right? No, we don't want... We don't want to fall down there. We want to go back up. And we want to go back and hack a security terminal. That's an information terminal. I don't believe I've... I don't believe anybody's m taken too much interest in those unless they were really interested in studying every single aspect of the game. And as you can see here, there's an ice node. If I fail to hack that, then this 
control station will break, I will need to repair it, and I will then unfortunately have to, oh god, alright, time to reset, there is a reset button, basically it works by lining up three of the positive nodes in a straight line, it can't just be like one, two, three like that, it has to be straight line either horizontally or vertically, so now that we've got another six minutes of free time, let's head on down here. Because, yeah, as soon as we get here, uh, these two doors open reveal a couple more turrets. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to blow up these barrels of whatever the hell is contained in them. Hurrah for sniping the modules. And then what we're going to do is we're going to beat the crap out of this until such time as it is weakened enough and we're okay with heading with a armor-piercing bullet. I think that works. Cool. Repeat the same process over here. Yes, it'll take a while and it's a bit tedious, but it's best to conserve as much armor piercing ammo as I possibly can because there is something that I'll have to be spamming a lot of armor piercing bullets on later on. And here we have another energy recharging station, so that will allow us to charge the power cell that we have, plus it will also charge up the warm boost implant that we plugged in earlier on in the segment. And I think with that now done and dusted, we can go back and activate that bulkhead that we uh, just made absolutely no mention to earlier on in the piece. And yes, I'm running a bit slowly. Actually, do I want to go and get some more... Yeah, I'll get some more cyber modules. Uh, uh, get, get some kind of skill with the cyber modules. That's one of the other things about playing on hard mode and impossible mode as a result. Uh, on hard and impossible mode, the um, cost... The, the cyber module cost for increasing your stats that actually goes up. Uh, if my memory, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, or if Psychedelic Eyeballs playthrough of this game uh, was correct, the hard mode increases the base cost by 39%, and then uh, the impossible mode is 79% of the base cost. The base cost being what you would normally be paying out for these upgrades in uh, easy or normal. Now, is there anything we can actually get? I'd like to get research, but I need another five more modules. Uh, anything on the stats I could get? Uh, yeah, I might as well get another level in agility just so I can move a little bit quicker. I'll hang on to these other four and work out what I can do with those later on once I've gathered up a handful more. So yeah, that's another reason why I don't play uh, impossible mode, because it will take like nearly freaking 20 cyber modules just to get the first level of a certain stat, which kind of sucks. So now that we've uh, got our charged power cell, we'll just plug it into this incredibly obscure override, get a handful more modules, and at this point we can then transfer ourselves, once Polito shuts up, and at this point we can then transfer ourselves into another part of this particular deck. Now this, I believe, is the medical subsector. And at this point, I'm going to bring it into the segment since we're just about at the 25 minute mark again, because I just take way too goddamn long with these segments. So next time, we'll have a look at the medical subsection. So see you there.